Hey y'all, Chris Jones, Gorilla Realty. This is going to be a quick video on my 50 point CMA method. So why do I have a different CMA method in the first place? Um, or why do you need one? This is something agents have been asking for, for a while and uh, I'm finally getting around to it. So the reason you need a new CMA method is that the standard CMA method that we're all taught from the beginning is broken. And I think that intuitively we all know that, right? Um, so you know, take three comps from over here, take three comps from over here, average them out, and here's your home valuation. We all know intuitively that that's a poor method. And the way that you know intuitively that it's a poor method is we know that you could basically massage that number or make it say whatever you want, right? And that's never a good position to be in. If you could basically say, hey, I want the property to be worth this, so I'm gonna use these comps, or I want the property to be, to be worth only this, and so I'm gonna use these numbers, that's not a good place to be in um, from a statistical standpoint because you're only getting the numbers to say what you want them to say, right? And we all know that you've been up against an agent at some point in your career who essentially bought the listing for you. So say you did a presentation and then the next day, um, you know, another listing agent came in and did a presentation and he got the listing and you thought, well, heck why? And then you see the list price, right? If you've ever gone back after the fact and checked out the list price and you realize it was listed for 50,000 more than the home is actually worth and you, you felt cheated, right? And he used the same CMA method that you used. He's just dishonest, right? So he made it say whatever he wanted to say and he wanted to butter up the seller and, and it worked, right? So how can you, how can you build a CMA that will withstand that scrutiny? And that's what the 50 point CMA method is all about, right? So instead of just using a couple of comps, right? Or using a very low sample size, we're gonna use a huge sample size and we're gonna take some statistical averages and we're gonna adjust for appreciation, a bunch of other fancy things um, that are gonna yield a much more accurate number at the end, right? So the key to the 50 point CMA method is that you're gonna use 50 different data points from three different methods. And then we're gonna take averages and establish a reasonable range around that. So the first method is the adjusted baseline method. And I'll explain that in just a moment. The second method is the active comps method. And then the third method is the closed comps method. And we're gonna triangulate those, take an average and establish a reasonable range. And then I'll show you the rest of my presentation later. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is you're gonna to wanna to put in this property stats into this calculator. Um, I've already pre-filled um, this with uh, 323 Whitney Drive. That's the property we're going to be um, establishing a value for. I've entered the subdivision, the number of bedrooms, the number of bathrooms, and the square footage, right? Once you're done that, you want to drop below the red dotted line, and we're just going to fill in some numbers, right? So I'm going to have to grab these from, we're going to have to grab these from uh, Zillow, or you can get them from your MLS. Um, uh, so let's just go to work. So baseline value is gonna be either a recent tax assessment or the last sale price of the subject property, right? So the last time that 323 Whitney sold or the, the most recent tax assessment, right? And I would rather use the most recent number because sometimes, especially after 2009, you saw values do some funky stuff. So you wanna always use the most recent new valuation, right? So I'm just gonna jump over to the MLS and I'm gonna look at the, um, at the most recent tax assessment was 164, three that's the baseline value right and again it can be either the sale price or the or the most recent tax assessment but you want to use whichever is more recent okay the date that the value was established was so this tax assessment is from 2017 so if it's a tax assessment you just put in january 1st and then the year if it was a sale price you would put in the actual you know month and day that the home sold and then you would do that, right? So this assessment is two and a half years old or 2.4 years old. And then we're gonna put in the appreciation rate. Now, um, in another video, I'm gonna show you how I like to calculate appreciation. Um, it's much more accurate than the way that your um, MLS probably does it. Um, but I think that your MLS number will get close enough for so the purposes of, um, of this calculator. I'm just gonna use the number that's published in my MLS. Uh, which is two and a half percent. And then this is gonna give you a new adjusted value, okay? 
and that new adjusted value is 174,394, right? So what this, what this method does is it takes the baseline assessment, it takes the appreciation rate, and then it takes the number of years appreciated, and it basically automatically compounds that appreciation and shows you the new value, which is 174,394, all right? All right, now let's move on to method number two, which uses active comps, right? So the key to active comps is to choose accurate search criteria. So your search criteria is basically gonna be the number of bedrooms, the number of bathrooms need to be the same. The square footage needs to be 10, within 10% on either side of our um, actual square footage. So this is 10%, 1838 to 2246. And then the subdivision needs to be the same. Now, here's what you're gonna have in some slow markets, right? Um, or in low inventory markets, you're not gonna have a ton of active comps. We need to get this number to a minimum of 12, right? Because the whole point is to get 50 different data points. And the 50 different data points is gonna yield a much more accurate or statistically accurate number at the end. So from active comps, we gotta get a minimum of 12, right? And so right now we have zero, and that tells us that we need at least 12 more. And so I'm gonna perform this search and I'm gonna get an average list price, okay? And that average list price is 180.233, okay? And the number of comps that it had um, was initially 11, right? And so I, I actually, um, increase the search to include the subdivision across the street, okay? And that ended up yielding 17 active comps total, okay? Makes sense? All right, and then once you've done that, you're gonna move on to the final valuation method, which is closed comparables, right? So this is stuff that's closed in the subdivision in the last six months. Now, six months is the default, okay? But I did a search and unfortunately there were only 13 closed comps in the last 16 months in my search range, okay? And so I needed to expand that, I needed to expand that reach or the number of months all the way back so that I had a total of 50 points, right? So I need 19 more to, to make this a 50 point CMA to make it really accurate. Okay, and so what you do is you just go back 12 months, okay, or if that still wasn't enough, then you would go back 18 months. I actually had to go back 18 months to get enough closed comps. Now, here's what a lot of people are doing. You're rolling your eyes and you're saying, oh my God, you're not adjusting for appreciation. Um, 18 months ago, um, houses were selling for a lot less, less than they sell today. And that's where um, this calculator comes in handy because it's already gonna take the appreciation rate that you that you gave us and it's going to automatic automatically add it to those closed comps okay so this is going to be an automatically adjusted adjusted value okay and the closed comps that i got were 192 i took an average 192 641 okay well, i'm i apologize 162 162 641 okay and we ended up with a total of, how many was it? 39, right? So we had plenty. Once we went back 18 months, so we had plenty. So we had 39, all right? And this all works out. And so now we're gonna go back up to the top and we're gonna look at our valuation, okay? And it shows us the, the average for each one of our methods. So adjusted baseline said 174, active comp said 180, Close comp said 165, and again, this is automatically adjusted for um, the correct amount of appreciation based on the 18-month the search, so it's really important that you update this, okay? But once you do, it's gonna take all those and it's gonna take an average of them, 173,436, okay? I feel this is a really, really solid number, and more importantly, I can go to the seller and I can show them the methods that we use and show them that this is gonna withstand any amount of scrutiny it would even stand up to an appraiser's valuation, okay? And then we're gonna establish a range of value around that property, okay? So you know that a home is not a commodity, um, that generally there's a reasonable range. Um, typically it's about 10%. So 10% on either side, you could sell it for a little less, 
you could sell it for a little more depending on if you can find the right buyer or if you can get a ton of traffic to the property. And uh, we'll, we'll discuss um, how to list every property at the high end and then actually sell it without constantly discounting. Okay, so I'm gonna discuss how I do that in the future. But right now, you have a valuation method that will show you a very reasonable range of value that's based on a minimum of 50 data points. And again, can withstand any amount of scrutiny. It could even stand up to a professional appraisal. And it only took me about 10 minutes and access to my MLS. All right, hope you enjoy. Hope it makes it easier. Talk soon.